Sesame. That's the research team that just released the most human AI voice I've ever experienced. And you know what? I'll let it do the talking for itself. Scones? Like fancy pastries with clotted cream? Yeah, but can you pronounce it more a bit more like scones? Like a quick scones? Ah, oh, you want me to go full on British? Okay, okay. Scones. Did I get it? Yeah, I, I would say you did. That's pretty impressive. <sighs> Thanks. Not bad for an AI, huh? Um, so you work with voices a lot, huh? <laughs> that must be fascinating. What kind of projects are you working on? Okay, so before we get into this video, I want to mention that all the information I got for this video is come and has come, sorry, directly from Sesame's website. And so if you want to read it yourself, there will be a link in the description. And also the demo for Sesame's uh, voice AI is on the website if you want to check it out there too. Now, there are a few different questions to explore. What is the team behind Sesame? I mean, what are their future plans? But first, I really want to answer the question of what is the difference between Sesame's speech model and a traditional TTS model? Now, something I noticed whilst editing this video is that I forgot to introduce myself. So my name is Hugo. I've been running Artillo AI for just over a year now. And in that time, we've helped many different businesses across quite a few different industries from real estate to healthcare to even logistics implement this type of voice AI technology in order to automate different types of phone calls, whether that be inbound or outbound. And so if you're remotely interested in something like this, then you can contact us via the form on our website, which will be linked down in the description of this video. The first real difference is that what Sesame has released isn't labeled a TTS model. In their paper, they have called it a CSM model or a conversational speech model. The actual first difference between a TTS model and a CSM model is that unlike a regular TTS model, which takes in text and generates speech solely from that, uh, a CSM model takes in both text and audio as an input. Also something that they do is they take in conversational history. So they take in the audio and text of the conversation. This is a massive difference because it allows them to generate more natural feeling and sound human or AI speech, sorry. So again, to compare to the regular TTS, it would generate speech word for word or sentence for sentence maybe. And based on that, it would, you know, create its audio. And this approach isolates the generation of just a word or just a sentence and removes all of that context of the conversation or of the previous parts of the conversation, which are necessary and should be present for, you know, that improved realism. Now, also something that this conversational history approach allows for is the the dynamically changing of pronunciations. For example, in the UK, we have people who say scone and we have people who say scone. And those two things have the exact same meaning, obviously. And in text, they are both labeled the same S C O N E. There's no difference in spelling on the way you pronounce it. And a regular TTS model wouldn't be able to be prompted between scone and scone naturally within the conversation itself. Whereas because the CSM model is taking in audio as well, it can notice the differences between scone and scone within the audio itself. And so you can tell it, look, I would like you to pronounce scone from now on scone, or I want you to pronounce scone as scone now. And it can listen to you because it has that conversational history. They also have an example of one of these pronunciation corrections on their website, which is a bit more useful and kind of shows why and how this can be important in an actual conversation. Nice to meet you, Louis. Oh, hi. Um, actually, it's uh, Louis. Uh, sorry about that, Louis. So uh, another thing I wanted to say, which is not to do with the difference per se of the TTS model and the CSM model, um, but this CSM model by Sesame has an extremely, extremely impressive um, ability to have natural sounding speech patterns. It can pause, laugh, do imitation shifts, which is the changes in pitch of your voice and many other conversational nuances to make you know the speech sound and feel more natural. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is in their research article blog, Blog, whatever we want to call it, Sesame did a study comparing their model to human speech. And they basically just asked humans, you know, which one do you prefer the sound? Of? And when listening to a single phrase in isolation that was either generated by Sesame's CSM or, you know, was actually said by a human, and the people in the study actually couldn't distinguish between which one of these audios was by the human. And they were choosing, you know, their preference at around a rate of 50-50. The um, exact rate was 
was 47.1% for the human reference and 52.9. So technically the CSM model by Sesame did actually, you know, get more preference, but you know, this is not enough of a difference for it to be a clear preference. However, when context was provided before the phrase, people were able to identify the human reference and they were preferring the human reference more. So about 66.7% of the time compared to the um, Sesame model at around 33.3% of the time people prefer that one. So about exactly two thirds to a third. This shows to me that context is really important in how the next sentence should be said or synthesized by an AI. And even though Sesame is extremely impressive, you know, there is still a gap to be filled in terms of, you know, reaching that 50-50 mark where we can't distinguish a human or AI model at all. Also, I want to mention this and it is a complete guess and I have no data for this, but I feel like if we were to take a TTS model, a speech synthesis model like 11 labs and let's say Turbo V2 or any of their models, and we run that exact same study with the speech first in a single isolation phrase or whatever, then I would say it is likely that humans would prefer 50-50. Again, I believe 11 labs has really, really impressive synthesis. However, if we were to do the second part with context, I believe that, you know, these, the current models of TTS that we have would, you know, there, there would be an even bigger gap between human preference and you know, the people that preferred the AI as Eleven Labs lacks that conversational history and that conversational context that even with Sesame having that, you know, it was still a 66.7 to 33. And so I think if we used, you know, current TTS models, it would look closer to 80, 20 or even maybe 90, 10. And again, I have no data, but this is just from my um, feeling and intuition. Next, I wanted to quickly talk about the team behind Sesame and then their future plans. Like when can we use this model? and Will it be open source? Things like that. So first we have Brendan Iribe. I hope I'm saying that right, which is the co-founder of Sesame. And he was the former CEO of Oculus, the company that does VR headsets that was purchased by Meta. And the other co-founder is Kit Kumar, who led engineering for Discord's Clyde AI. So clearly they have a mix of Oculus, which is a bit more hardware and Kit Kumar at Discord's Cly AI, which is a bit more, you know, software and technical LLM applications. They also recently secured Series A funding, which was led by the private venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz, which is a huge and very well credited venture capital firm in that kind of software LLM and tech space. So from my understanding with the vision of Sesame and their team is they believe that natural voice interaction will be the next big shift in human and computer interaction. And they believe that emotionally flat voices like Siri and Alexa are just not good enough and are just too tiring for users to actually engage in, you know, using their computer via voice and you know emotionally expressive voices like the CSM model we got from Sesame is important for users to actually start you know interacting with their computer via voice. Something I also quickly wanted to mention before we get into the future stuff and the plans is that the latency and turn taking technology on their demo seems really impressive you know nothing that really exceptional teams like Cinderin aren't doing and probably even a little bit better. However, it is really the voice that stands out. And obviously the voice, the CSM model is, you know, their development. So that makes sense. Oh yeah. And something actually that the founder of Cinderin, Brian mentioned on Twitter is that they are likely using a really small model, like a one, three or at max an 8 billion parameter model behind the scenes in order to have that really impressive speed. But we obviously know that those smaller models reduce the overall intelligence of the demo or of the use case. In terms of the future, they do want to release the base model, um, which doesn't include the fine tuned voices that we you know, are able to interact with on the demo and they want to open source it. And uh, when I was also scrolling again through Twitter and looking at this kind of news and looking through all the tweets from their team and everything like that, um, I read that they are planning to release this, you know, open source it in the next week or two. But other than that, for their future plans, I wasn't able to find much more information. So my assumption is that obviously other inference providers will, you know, provide the access to the Sesame model. And then that's when, you know, as developers, we can start to integrate it into our apps. Also, I wish I could answer the question of cost. Um, I don't know because this is most likely going to depend on the inference providers and how much it costs to run inference for a model that takes in both audio and text. And so my assumption is that based on that, 
we can expect the model to be just slightly more expensive than our regular TTS models as we're adding not only conversational history, which shouldn't make that big of a difference in if it was just text, but because we're also adding conversational history of audio, which is, you know, much larger than text as a file or the size of it, we can expect slightly higher costs. Also, they do mention in their website that currently this is only really for and has been trained on English data. So it doesn't have multilingual capabilities as of right now. But again, for the future, they are planning to add support for about 20 languages. So hopefully we'll see that in the future soon. Okay, so cool. That's really all I could, you know, find out and research about about Sesame and the new CSM voice model. There is more information about, you know, how the CSM model works for, and from when I read it, you know, it was unfortunately um, above my pay grade and something that I wasn't able to learn well enough to be able to, you know, be allowed to even teach about it. So if you want to know the more capable and the more technical side of how CSM models work, again, you can go onto their website, which is going to be linked in the description. And again, if you want to demo it, also check out the link in the description to their demo. If you watch this far and you want a quick conclusion, of what my opinion is, then I would say this seems really, really impressive. A conversational history to me makes a lot of sense. As we saw in the study, a single phrase, 50-50, you know, most TTS models I believe would get 50-50. It is very difficult to tell what is human and what is not, especially without context. But then with context, we saw that 66 to 33, even with this new CSM model, which, you know, like I said, it is the most human AI voice I've ever experienced. And yet, humans were still able to prefer or did prefer the human reference 66% of the time. So again, that really, to me, tells me that context is extremely important. And so that way, and so the way that they're moving forward with this, with the conversational history of the audio and text just makes sense to me. The only thing I'm worried about is the cost of adding audio and text. If we can make inference cheap, that's amazing. And also the speed, you know, how long is it to process audio and text? And also, I want to know how does this all work? Do we pass in single words? Can we stream this? All those types of things that matter for conversational AI voices. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.